scripted, unshackled, uncouth. What you're about to hear is for mature audiences only. It's Miguel Fuller, Holly O'Connor, and Scotty the Body. It's the Miguel and Holly Uncensored Podcast. Only on Hot 101.5. Hello. Hi. Hey. Good day to you, Miguel and Holly Uncensored. My name is Miguel Fuller. Well, I'm Holly O'Connor. I'm Scotty the Body. And I want to start off with a really cool email that we got uh, just in this morning. Oh, it's hot off the presses. Oh, fresh. Yeah, fresh and hot. Hot Fresh out the kitchen. Uh, This is from Platypus Posse member Amber Glass. Oh, I I saw you pass that along, but I didn't have a chance to read it yet. She said, hi, Miguel. Just wanted to reach out and let you know that y'all are doing something really special. During the height of the pandemic, with all of the craziness and uncertainties, y'all helped me get through it. I know it sounds crazy, but I have listened to the show for a few years now. And being able to listen to you on the radio or the podcast every day gave me a sense of normalcy when everything else was a mess. Mm. Listening to the podcast was my escape. So big thank you to each of you for putting in the extra time and work every day. It hasn't gone unnoticed. Mm. Also, from listening to the show... I reached out to soul worker Stacy oh. and wow, 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 wow. She is amazing. I will admit that I was a skeptic, but she proved me wrong in so many ways. Oh. Miguel, Holly, and Scotty, y'all are rock stars at what you do, and it really does touch people's lives. I love listening and seeing how you all might have similar or opposite views from me, but explain to where I understand your views. It keeps me open-minded and vulnerable Mm. to new or different ways of thinking. That I love. Thank you so much for everything. Sincerely, Amber. Mm. That's the goal, I think. I had to write like a small bio about myself and like what you know, I felt I brought to the table, which I was like, oh, imposter syndrome. Can't write this. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's one of the things I wrote. I was like, my fondest goal is that, you know, we have these open discussions mm-hmm. and you leave your mind open enough and leave your judgment panties off enough. Mm-hmm. Hat, whatever, glasses, your judgment, whatever. <laughs> <suit> wear. <laughs> Jock strap. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, your judgment, whatever, your judgment bustier yeah. off. <laughs> and... <laughs> you do think about things from a different perspective because there are so many and most of us, myself included, can only see a few. And I know some people are like, well, it's not my job to educate you. And I agree. If you're not in a place to educate, don't. But those of us who are trying to actively help educate and want to, you being open to receiving, that has to be there. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just, that's so great. That was one of the uh, conversations that popped up when I was on DJ Eakin. He used to do nights on Hot 101.5. Mm-hmm. But uh, you now, you see him everywhere in Tampa Bay. Yeah. DJ in the Bucks games. Right? His tagline is like the most connected DJ in the Bay. Or Tampa Bay or something like that. And he's, a, like you said, Holly, a DJ for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Well, he had me on his podcast that he does weekly to talk about the whole situation with the baby mm. and his homophobic slurs um, and really just slanderous, awful messaging on people living with HIV AIDS. Yes. Well, we talked about that. And then we were talking about just sort of like the different thoughts and viewpoints of people and politics came up a little bit. And I said, one of the hardest things to do is to listen to the other side when you feel like they aren't debating from the same truth that you are. And I said, but you don't want to just completely shut them off. Like there is someone, Holly, that someone you and I used to deal with who was a a listener of the show we were on with Kramer back in the day. And then the second time around we were in Panama City, she was a listener and um, I love her. She was always so great and supportive, but she's super conservative. And when I look at her social media, I mean, she posts the like ridiculous mm. conservative, Hardcore. Like, not based in fact. And so on his podcast, I said, there are a lot of times that I look at her stuff on Facebook and I haven't deleted her because I still love her as a human being. Mm-hmm. I just want to shake her and say, you are a smart cookie. Like, this isn't even real. Like, what are you talking about? But I don't delete her because I want to continue to try to understand what truth 
that side is coming from. Mm -hmm. And if we yeah. shut people out from different sides, then we'll never know or be able to make any inroads in trying to find some common ground. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to do. And it's not easy because there are so many times when I see memes that she'll post and I just want to go unfriend. I yes. Know. And I'm like, I can't. Like, I have to unfortunately come to where she is and be like, one day I haven't. I will, but I haven't. To be like, all right, can you just walk me through why you believe this? And come at it from a non-judgmental way. Oh, that's so hard. It is. It's very hard. It is almost impossible sometimes because you're not even arguing from like the same truth. Yeah. So anyway. It's <sighs> tough. It's tough. And uh, not just politically, but recently with um, just everything going on in the world mm -hmm. and not just politics, but it seems like the only thing there is is division. Mm. And you have to understand we're not going to get anywhere with that. No. Well, that's, I mean, that part is like literally yesterday we watched the... The uh the next purge movie. Oh. Purge forever. And like they came out with another damn purge. Yes. Movie. yes. But okay. this time, like all in my head, like all I kept thinking is like, you know, it just literally just feeds into the division that we all face. And so everyone has their one like source that they get their information from. And all I could think yesterday in my state of mind was like, what if once like what if one group of people just literally just feed false information consistently enough where a group of people goes insane and like does some crazy ish. And as in the, the purge, capital. and well, yeah, and that, and they like kill people, and mm -hmm. I just, I don't know what was happening in my brain yesterday, but let's just say that like I just felt like that could legit happen. That was mm -hmm. the first time I ever watched one of those movies. Like, oh wow, like that. As crazy as it seems, like all it takes is like you know, again, one big group to watch one specific thing over and over, and just be fed information that's wrong, and next thing you know, it's like we're hiding in bunkers. Making sure that every every year we don't die because now this is put into legislation. Like January 6th? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's just scary to think that that's true. But it all comes right. from the fact of division. division. The fact that it's like we all have our one source that we're like, I can't talk about anything else. Because that's how I feel when I go home. Like, not home. But if I see family like up north, because I used to like jump into conversations like because we have many viewpoints that we like just different, like just hardcore, complete opposites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I I love when people can discuss, but I can't do that with my family. It just the conversation goes nowhere. We go in the mm. same circle, the same route, and I'm like, and I get so frustrated because I'm like, you're not hearing me. We're yeah. not we're not getting anywhere. And so like I literally was on the phone with my dad the other day, and I was telling him about my trip, and I was like, you know, I've just learned that I just I won't say anything anymore. Like I'll let mm. that conversation happen. I'll let it spiral out, and I won't say a single word. I won't make a single look because as soon as I do, it's like me against you know six, and I'm like. I'm, Nobody's listening, so fuck this conversation. Mm -hmm. And it just, it always happens. But that's my thing now. Because it's like, I love when people can be like, I like talking about different viewpoints. I've also learned in certain situations, and I don't know how it would go with your friend on Facebook, Miguel, but in this like situation for me, I'm like, nope, I just don't say anything. I literally look down at my phone. I wait until it's over. And then I'll go into a conversation, whatever's next. Yeah, I don't bring up stuff online hardly ever. Because, e like... If we're going to be like on sides or whatever, first of all, I'm not going to engage with someone on a side that I feel like I have to provide um, like references and a bibliography for. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time. Right. But even on the people that are quote unquote on the same side that I am, I don't want to deal with that with them either. Right. Because I disagree with some of their shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, again, <sighs> it's like either you're with someone fully in everything they think or you're against them. Yeah. And I'm done. Like, I, I won't, I will not play into that bullshit anymore with either side. And so I just try my best to promote the fact that, you know what? G guess what? S surprise. We're all the fucking same at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. We're humans and we have one planet to live on. And if you want to like die on this hill of something really stupid, Nothing that anyone says is going to change your mind. But know that at the end of the day, we are the same. You and I. Mm -hmm. it's and I true. just try to, you know, I, I don't, I cannot, I cannot expend energy on being negative with someone. Yeah. I feel like as often as I try to not post political stuff or go down that rabbit hole, things right now, it's just so bad mm -hmm. <laughs> and like there are people's 
lives at stake now. Yeah. And so it's like it's it's getting to the point to where for me as like a, a wannabe activist. The way that some groups in our country are moving like it isn't just a oh should we raise taxes or lower taxes or you know what types of groups should get funding it's like they now our governor in florida has signed on to a bill to try to overturn roe v roe versus wade for abortion like that is a fundamental thing that i cannot stick my head in the sand in because if that happens with the very conservative Supreme Court we have, and they overturn that, there are so many lower income people that will be disadvantaged, yeah, that yeah. will be hurting themselves. And it's like, I can't just stick my head in the sand and and not, and especially on that topic, because in the past, I was like, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot yeah. pole because there is nothing. But when you now are going to start affecting marginalized communities and, and women, and I... I can't stay silent. And so that's why I'm like, I'm having a really hard time balancing between speaking up and staying silent and not wanting to get into the fray with those things. But it's just like, I just, I can't because it's, it's so crazy with voting laws, voter suppression laws that are happening all around the country, transphobic laws that are trying to pick on these marginalized communities. And I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah. I can't just be quiet anymore. Yeah. And you should. You should. Being loud is not for everyone. Right. And Absolutely. so you have to choose how to support the causes that you support. And not all of it consists of going back and forth with people online. Right. If it is yours, then you take up that cross and you bear it. That's what you yeah. do. And right. no one's saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying I can't yeah, right. expend my energy on that. I, I don't have, I don't have the, me, the what do you say? The mental the bandwidth. bandwidth. I, it's not there. Mm. I have so much other bullshit that I'm dealing with in my day-to-day -day life that I feel like if I jumped into that, like the other parts of my life would crash down because mm. I would put too much into that. Right. So it's, everyone has to do it a little bit differently. Absolutely. I mean, I have a friend who he is a keyboard warrior. And so a lot of times when I'll post topics on my Facebook page, and it's more so, I mean, I, I posted about this whole uh, Ron DeSantis, our governor in Florida, signing on to this support to overturn Roe versus what Roe versus Way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, listen, I'm not here for back and forth because you believe what you believe. But this is happening. If yeah. you are a person who digs your head in the sand and doesn't vote, you don't know. You need to know what people that are in power in your state that will affect you what they're doing. I don't think it's right for people to ignore it. Like you have to know what's going on. Like you have to have a, 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 a grasp on it in, in that. How does this affect you? Right. Does this mean that you have to put your armor on and go combat? Mm -hmm. No, you make your voice heard at the vote. Absolutely. And I do believe that you need to at least, you know, but the, the problem with that is how badly it's been twisted, mm -hmm. uh, abortion rights, mm -hmm. and how badly people don't even know what they're fighting about. Right. Like the, the blind ignorance to those stats and facts and details, mm -hmm. there's no way to combat that. Right. So you got to just rally the other people that may have not been paying attention, mm -hmm. at least to let them know this is something that you should pay attention to. Right. Not necessarily fight with people about. And I see that a lot on my on my Insta stories when I'll post, you know, something that says, hey, here's what Governor DeSantis is doing or here's what's happening. And people will be like, I had no clue this was going on. Mm. So I try to like, you know, intersperse it with videos of me scaring Scott at our little temporary home, you know, <laughs> or stuff from the show to be like, all right, here's some funny. Hey, here's some shit you really need to know about that's going to be affecting your rights. All right, here's some more funny shit. Right. Yeah. Hey. So we're living in some some purge horrific times, it feels like sometimes. <laughs> Something is coming though, y'all. Like, I know you feel it. Oh, absolutely. And I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know. What is that? I guess we don't know what it's going to look like, but like, that's the thing. It's like, we've gone to pretty freaking extremes lately. I don't know where it goes from like, what's next? Like, what is like, what's going to be the moment we're all like, okay, that's too far. Like, cause I thought we hit a couple of those moments, but now I feel like if certain things happen and that wasn't too far for some people, 
what is going to be that moment for a good majority of people to be like, oh, yeah, that, that's been messed up. We here's, got messed up. It's here, like we are a frog in a boiling pot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, here's it's what hot. I think is going to happen is that we, and I heard this on a, an NPR podcast, where they were mentioning that, especially in the 90s, we felt like, and I'm this is paraphrasing from um, a person, so this is an unoriginal thought, but they were saying that in the 90s, it felt like America's project of democracy was like done. Like we said, this is how you exist in a democracy. Like we have officially accomplished and shown the world, this is what it means to have a democracy. America is finished. Okay. And now we're realizing that it's hanging on by a thread with yeah. everything that's going on right now with voter suppression laws happening around the country. I mean, all these other things that we've mentioned that America is a continual project and that we are going through a, a phase right now when there's a back and forth and we're trying to figure out what version of America do we want to show the world and what sort of version of America will we be? Do we want to be a true democracy or do we want to be a representative democracy where it is held by people that don't represent the majority? Right. Yeah. It, oh, it's it's, a, and so that's why. So they were saying that we have to realize that we can't just stick our head in the sand and we have to realize that we all have something to uh, at stake and that this uh, America project is still being shaped. I feel like what did I read or see that said like, because you know how young our country is compared to all other countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, these are America's teen years mm. where it's like, <laughs> just turns to shit. Right. Like you go through puberty, like yeah. your teen years, not great. Yeah. Nobody had a great time. Mm -hmm. It was something. And that's where like America is in the grand scheme of how long countries have been around. If that makes sense. I mean, I Absolutely. feel like I read that somewhere because it is, it's precarious. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's scary. So I just say all this to say that keep your eyes open, no matter what side that you're on, but just know what, is happening. So when you do vote, which you should be voting, yeah. you can make your voice heard. Yeah, th that's hugely important. Um, I had something that we were supposed to talk about last week, but we didn't get a chance to. Um, Scott, behind the scenes, you were talking about meeting your girlfriend's parents that yes. are here for a few, for a little bit. Um, while they're having some construction done up north where they where they live, yeah. And you brought up you didn't know how to like approach your girlfriend's parents when it comes to like handshakes or hugging or mm, whatnot. That's oh right. yeah, we're going to the thick of it right now because I just the thick of it. Oh yes, do, 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 do. well I had to, because I'm in a position now where it's like okay, I'm an adult. I view myself as an adult. My girlfriend's older than I am, so she's definitely an adult. She has her own house. That's where her parents are staying at right now. And so as I met them, I didn't know how to approach like, I have so many questions. Like one, I don't know how to say hello. Is it a handshake, a high five, a fist bump, a hug? And I said the thing with a hug, especially because I'm not normally like a hugger. No. I have to build myself up in my head if like, especially if I don't know you. Like I could joke around and hug you if I have a great relationship with you. But like in a new group, you know, people say goodbye or hello with a hug. You're not a hugger. I am not that person to walk up arms open because it's just always bothered me in Which a way of weird, like. Which is weird, by the way, because you're so open and friendly. You mm. would, I would think you're a hugger. But it's just that thing in my head is like, I don't want to be that creepy guy that's like, I don't know. Maybe I could get rid of that thought of like, I don't want to go for it and you not go for it. Because there was a moment recently like where like I saw my girlfriend's parents and I like, literally right they're walking by. It would have been a moment of like. Oh, hey, like I have a good relationship with y'all now. It's been a couple weeks, like hug. But I was like, yeah, I don't know if we're on that level. I don't know when that will be. So let me not. Oh. And then now I'm going through the whole process of like, I don't even know what to call them. Like, I don't know if I call them like Mr. and Mrs. Uh, just their first name, Mr. Last name and Mrs. Last name. I'm like, ah, so now I don't, I literally don't call them anything. I just kind of <laughs> like, hey, 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 you. <laughs> And hey, I, I, hey I wanna, man. <laughs> I've been there with partners. Hey, hey. Hey, just hopefully they get their attention. Hey, bro. You're like, uh, by the way. And you hope you they <laughs> they hear you. So it's like, I'm going through all that. Like what I want to do in my, like I keep telling myself in my brain, I'm like, 
just pick one and go with it and just ride it out. Like yeah. I want to just throw out their names and like mm -hmm. not say Mr. or Mrs. Just throw it out. But my worry is like, I don't want to do it and then just be disrespectful. Like I don't want them, obviously they wouldn't be like, that's really disrespectful. But maybe at night when they, them two are just talking like, well, that's kind of rude. Why doesn't, you know, Scott say Mr. or Mrs. And then if I do that, what if it's like, well, that's kind of weird. Why does he call us Mr. or Mrs.? So I'm like, I don't know what's appropriate there. I don't know why I'm not hugging them. Yeah, I feel like that's your girlfriend's job is to find out what they think would be disrespectful and then relay it to you. Yeah, I need to have a conversation with her because I think... She knows already, probably. Oh, yeah. No, she definitely does. And I think I asked her and she even said, like, I don't know. I'm like, no, give me like, give me one and let me run with it. Yeah. Because I mean, she had the same thing when she met my dad. She's like, I don't know if she knew what to say. So, I mean, I feel like if you're out of high school and college and you're dating someone... You just call them by their first names yeah. because when you are, you know, a little 16 year old, you know, Scott going up to your girlfriend's parent house, you know, when you're like, hey, well, how's it going? I'm in high school. Yeah. Like then you say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but you're an adult now, you know, like but now it's acceptable. Right. You're like, hey, Bob and Susan, oh. yeah. you know, call them by their by their first name. I think that's correct. Yeah, because, because you're an adult I would now. not appreciate someone in school just like I'm trying to picture my daughter forward ahead many years and she's mm -hmm. got a boyfriend and they're in high school or even early college and they're like, what's up, Holly? I'd be oh, like, oh, bitch. <laughs> you have the right name out your mouth. <laughs> That's what I was saying. But I mean, once you are literally you've graduated college, you have a career, you have a job. That's a different story. Uh, yeah. I mean, yes, you're a young adult, but you're still an adult. But mm -hmm. it's still, okay, I just like, I put myself in like situations where I'm like trying to, I'm in the kitchen and then like I see her dad like on the couch and be like, hey, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I, your home dog? Like, I just, okay, I'm going to go for it. I mean, yeah. you are an adult. Okay. Yeah. Just be weird. What do you think other adults call each other? Yes. I, I go, well, okay, again, I'm, I'm with their daughter. So it's just like, I will do it. Like, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm still hyping myself up, but I'm just going to go all out like names and like hugs and handshakes. But don't do a hug if it makes you uncomfortable. Well, I think it only makes me uncomfortable because I worry about the person. Like, I'm, I don't know. Like, if I ever, if I get through the first one, it's okay. Then I'm pretty good. Wait a minute. Do they hug you? What do they do when they come in? I mean, well, like, when they first came in, I just gave them a handshake. Okay. And I was just like, hi. But now I but feel like... But you've seen them a couple times now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I see, I've seen them plenty of times now. We actually have a pretty cool relationship where it's like... Okay. I feel perfectly comfortable with them. Well, but, what do they do? What does it look like they're leaning to do when, you, when they see you? No, just not that. Nobody's made that move of, like, you know... Are they not a hugger? Like, are Maybe they not a hugging not family? And that's fine if you notice that they don't hug, but... Because my boyfriend's parents will actively, like, come up with arms open. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, okay. That makes it easy. I like when people do that because right. I'll hug you back, but... I mean, maybe they're not, but also make me... I, ah. Maybe you're giving off that energy that you are a cold-ass bitch. I'm not a cold-ass bitch. I'm a warm-ass bitch. No, but I mean, you know, I, I think it is in today's world, and I have um, a pair of friends that have... Uh, how old is Owen? He is seven or eight. No, actually, no, I'm sorry. He is way younger than that. I think he's like <laughs> four, three or four. Okay. And one time we were over at their house for a little dinner party. And as we were getting up to leave, um, I got down and I was like, all right, bye, Owen. Hug. And he looked at me and said, no. And he gave me a fist bump. And uh, his mom, our, my friend, she was like, I'm teaching him that if he doesn't want to be a hugger, he doesn't have to hug people. You know, obviously show something, but his body, his choice, if he doesn't feel comfortable. And I was like, I love that. Yeah, that's a big thing with parenting lately. Is right. that you're supposed to teach your kids body autonomy. Absolutely. Mm. And I was really like... Tr it's tricky with older relatives too, by the way. Right. I supposed like, to tell grandma that you're like, no, she doesn't have to hug you. They'll be like, what type of crazy ass kid are you raising? But mm -hmm. it's, it's true. Uh, but as long as they're respectful in some way and offering the fist bump is a great way to do it. Absolutely. And so I feel like if you have a conversation with your girlfriend and see like, are your parents huggers or not? And you can see, because like with my fiance's parents, I'm a hugger. So I was just, when I first met them, I was like, <laughs> hey! But we are in that awkward stage right now where I'm trying to transition into calling them mom and dad. Yeah, I was going to say. Because, I mean, we're getting married. So it's just, it's awkward for me because I'm just an awkward person when it comes to those <laughs> sort of things. Yeah, I don't remember even what I did with my 
former in-laws is that what you call them yeah yeah oh yeah my yeah. ex-husband's family i don't even remember i think that i just at one point just was like hey so because i don't i don't remember did i call them i think you Mom? call them no i don't ever remember you i mean i could be I mistaken think I called her first name yeah you always just said her first name i don't ever remember you calling her mom or his dad dad no i don't remember doing that <laughs> like, and that but the great thing that happened is that after i had my i would just call her nana there you go uh, that's the greatest Boom. one of the great perks of having a kid you just call them by grandparent names right and then and there's then no that, confusion no one's confused right so i Ugh. yeah i don't know I got to ask your girlfriend. Yeah. I put it on the other person. Like, just <laughs> put it on her. Put it. Sorry. I know she probably is not. She's not a huge fan of me. I don't think. What? Nowadays she is. Oh. But I, I don't know if she would appreciate me saying to put it on her. But I think that you have to. In the, in the Yeah, we'll have another. We'll, yeah, we'll have another conversation because now that I've been around for a little bit and I've seen him plenty of times, it's a yeah. little different from when they first walked in. Yeah. So I think, again, I think I can approach it. Like, and even if they're. I guess I'll make sure they're, you know, huggers or not. Yeah. Because I could work myself up to be like, you know what? We're going in. Mm. Hugging the mom, handshake with the dad. I can hug the dad too. I don't know. That's all, that's the next that I one's like harder. We're talking about this a lot. No. Like, we have a lot of He's options. So nervous. And yes, you're just like, I don't know, I don't know what to well, do. I just gotta I gotta get through it. I'll let you know how it goes. You got this. Holly, you said something curious. You said that your girlfriend wasn't always a fan or yeah. what, what What do you mean? Well, uh, she, now to be fair, we had all had drinks. Oh, oh God. And, oh, drunk conversation with Scott's girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, and I mean, and I was really proud of her for this. She was like, I didn't really like you that much. Oh, I was like, that's fair. That's the headline of this uh, podcast today. That's fair. I said, <laughs> that's fair. Because keep in mind, you know, uh -huh. the two of you guys knew each other for a long time before you got like, actually um officially together yes so i mean i can imagine as someone in that position dating a radio person date not even say dating hanging out with mm -hmm. we didn't, there was not a term so uh we just had to kind of go with you yes and that's what i told her i was like I, I apologize for anything i may have said that was you know unfortunate yeah because at in the entire time before you guys started dating, my main goal was just Scott. I didn't know you. I don't. We had never met. I didn't know any of the people that Scott had been casually hanging out with. So instead of all and like you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it was that I said that caused her some sort of you know not not goodness. But I was like, I, I there I, I I there's nothing I can do except to say that my main concern was Scott. Mm. He's like my little brother. So mm -hmm. any opinion I had, any whatever was basically towards him. Now you guys are official and, you know, it's it's a different story. So I'm sure she doesn't like dislike me anymore. No, no. She like, I, the, I remember we would have so many conversations before her and I were like official because we'd get on here and we'd talk about certain situations. And it was very general talk. Like it, it wasn't was. like specific to one person. And Miguel, I'm sure to. you said some untoward things. Oh, yeah, you both did. And, oh, but she said specifically. <laughs> no, there was a couple moments, but I told her, I was like, you know, it's not you. Yes. It's just the idea of it all. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and that's what I was trying to, and that's why I was like, it takes a lot of guts to tell someone you didn't use it like them or whatever. But I was mm -hmm. like, good for you. I totally get it. I, I don't even know if I would have liked me. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, well, that's what I mean, she was even talking about. She's like, I don't even know. Like, they don't like me. Like, I don't think Holly likes me. I was like, it's not you she's talking it's about not, specifically. It, it never was. It, mm. Because we had to just only go with the broad picture and you. Yes. Right. Not anybody else. Yeah. Not, you know, it was just, <laughs> you're, you were our charge we mm -hmm. had to figure you out and so that's where all that came from and i totally get it i just hope that i don't do wrong by her anymore oh she said i'll slice you bitch <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. i don't think anybody said he was gonna slice anybody <laughs> she said i'm gonna slice you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she did not say that <laughs> she's going to slice anyone uh, uh but thank you very much uh, now, did your girlfriend have any words about me? Like when y'all first got together? Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, like, yeah. yeah. Well, like I remember. Well, she definitely thought that you didn't like her either because oh. you know, and she would come over and she'd walk upstairs. You know, again, Miguel's protective and like 
he's not oh, judging. Oh, you had a bitch face on, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You would have that face where it's like, you know, he would either like be like you looking look like some you're type of way. Bothered. Or like you could tell that you're thinking or again, then you come on here and say some certain things or whatever. And so for a long time, she's like, he doesn't like me. I'm like, he does. He's just, you know, he's observant. <laughs> he's taking everything in and he's just making sure that, you know, well, one, I guess I don't get fucked over in this situation. Mm -hmm. But I was like, and again, the coolest transition was as soon as we like became official, it was, you know, that immediate change of like, all right, welcome, like literally open arms of like, and you actually did hug her and say everything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. But, I didn't touch her before. Yeah. <laughs> But this is what I'm saying. I didn't know. Because we didn't know. <laughs> How are we supposed to know? And so I get it. Wouldn't you not like, like, I'll be honest, Miguel, you're intimidating as fuck. Hey, Am I really? really? Well, yeah, you, okay, you walk into the house and you're perched up on the couch. <laughs> you're on your, your phone house. and you look up a little bit. And then you look back at your phone. You're like, that bitch doesn't like me. And well, and not only that, I mean, Half let's the time talk, I don't think you like me. My 